Now, like we said before, when we say the word coils, it's basically a family name. A transformer is one device under this, in, within this family. And what is a transformer? Let's define it. A transformer is an electrical device that transfers energy between two or more circuits through electromagnetic induction. Let's look at the picture. We have a core. In this core, we have two um, coils. On the left, we have a primary coil, and on the, on the right, we have a secondary coil. Primary winding has n number of turns, and a secondary um, winding has n, it's n number of turns. They don't have to be the same. There are types of transformers that the number of turns in the primary will be equal to the number of turns of the um, uh, secondary in order to do just isolation. We will talk about that, but right now, any number of turns can be um, to the primary or to the secondary coils. To, this, to the primary winding, primary coil, we introduce voltage and current. This creates an electromagnetic field, a flux, and we see the direction of the flux. Because it creates a flux, that flux induces current on the secondary coil. And the secondary coil will convert the flux into output voltage and output current. So we have an input half and output half. An input coil, output coil. Primary coil, secondary coil. Inside a core. And let's look now a little bit more in depth at the fields and the direction of the fields associated with a transformer. And I repeat, a varying current in transformer's primary winding creates a varying magnetic flux in the core and a varying magnetic field impinging on the secondary windings, just as a repetition to what we did before. This varying magnetic field at the secondary induces a varying electromotive force, EMF, or voltage in the secondary winding. So we see three uh, fields here. The main core, the main, the, the main flux, which is actually in the main core, and we see two internal fluxes, which are basically leakage. So the electromagnetic field, which is being generated by the um, primary, by the current injected into the primary winding, create the main flux. Some of it actually is internally being leaked. Same idea with the secondary. It actually adds up to the main flux because it's a winding it's a, co it's a coil in this core, but because there is a flux being generated, the main one, in the core, also there is a leakage flux. These leakage fluxes are very, very dangerous in terms of lack of efficiency and losses of energy. We want to eliminate these as much as possible. We want all the flux that is being generated by the primary to be transferred to current and voltages in the secondary, not losing some of it in leakages. And if we look at the formula, the equation of a transformer, an ideal transformer, one that has no losses, we can say that the secondary voltage amplitude is relative to the number of turns of the primary winding to the secondary winding. In an ideal transformer situation, the formula is V1 times I1, meaning the multiplication is V times I of the primary. It is equal to V2 times I2, meaning the V times I of the secondary. 
if we continue to develop this formula, we'll see that the V2 over v V1 is equal to I1 over I2, the other way around, it's reversed. And it's equal to the, the ratio of the number of terms N2 divided by N1. V2 over one, V1 equal I1 over V2 equal N2 over N1. Let's look at the picture on the left to summarize what we just see, did. The primary, which is on the left, many terms, high voltage, low current. The secondary, what's on the right, few terms, low voltage, high currents, following the formula up there. Now let's look at the, again a little bit more in depth to ideal transformer. Basically it's a theoretical linear transformer that it's lossless and it's perfectly coupled. In other words, there are 100% couple, coupling between the primary and the secondary. No leakage in between. The entire energy that is being generated here is being transferred to here, converted to current and out the voltage go. That is, there are no energy losses and flux is completely confined within the magnetic core, nothing goes outside. Perfect coupling implies infinity, high core magnetic permeability and winding inductance and zero net magnetic force. When there is no any losses and there are no any leakages of flux, magnetic fields, that means there is zero net force based on Lorentz law. So there's no torque. God forbid then if there will be leakages within the transformer, there will be forces and they will be in opposite directions like we've seen before, and the transformer will start rotating or shaking. And here is how it is structured. We have an I and the E sec section inserted on alternate layers. That's in terms of the iron, the core itself. And that layers of E and I and I and E and E and I are all hooked up together with screws all the way through in the four corners. On top of the central road, central piece of core, we insert the two coils, the primary and the secondary. It's in the, they are actually wound, wounded on a, a former, which is basically an insulation material. Then once we finish to uh, wind the primary and the secondary, we actually cover it with another insulating cover for it not to be exposed to air or getting any kind of damages harmful to the surrounding. And here we have the terminals, which are actually popping out from the coils. In a minute, we'll see why, what these terminals do. They're actually the outputs and the inputs. And we insert the entire section of the coils on the center of the E. Then we close it with the I. And here are the, the reason for the terminals. Because a transformer can be step up transformer or step down transformer. We can have uh, uh, some, some value of input voltage coming in and increase the output voltage or decrease the output voltage at the end. Remember that formula. V1 over V2 equal I2 over I1. In other words, if we increase the output voltage, obviously at the same rate we decrease that output current. Because it's the other way around. A reverse proportion. But it can be in both directions. So in other words, one transformer can have several secondary coils, secondary windings, some of whom have more turns, some of whom have less turns, so we can be step up and step down transformer on the same case. And it, let's look at the picture on the bottom. In this particular picture, the bottom is a step down transformer, and the reason is that we enter with 1000 volts, 2 amps, it has 50 turns, 
That's the primary. The secondary is 10 turns, so we get 200 volts only and 10 amps. We inputted 1000 volts, the ratio of the turns N1 over N2 was 5 to 1, that's why the output voltage was 200 volts. We started with input of 2 amps, because of the 5 to 1 ratio in the turns, we came out with 10 amps. Note that the VA in the input and the VA at the output are the same in this case, 2000 watts. 1000 times 2 is equal to 200 times 10. It's VA. It's not effective. It's the apparent power. The effective will be less. And the effective is what it will be written in the label of the transformer. Or both of them, apparent and effective, will be written. But please note that the input power is identical to the output power, providing it's an ideal transformer, no losses in between. Normally, there are losses. Because of the currents and because of the voltages and because of the fluxes, there is a heat being generated. Heat is loss. And Ener electrical energy converts to heat, meaning there is, it does not convert to another electrical energy in the other side. Here is another application for coil, a toroid choke. A toroid is basically an angular ring of ferret, and we will deal with ferret a little bit later in this course, on which a coil is being wounded. The features of it is a high saturation flux density because of the ring shape core, very high saturation and concentration of the flux, and low radiation and low core loss, meaning no leakages. It's a very concentrated, no electromagnetic field radiation and leakage outside. Different applications, switching power supplies, smoothing circuit when, we, when I need high flux. Most suitable as chalk coils for high frequency transceivers. I want to make sure that I receive most of the energy being received being generated, being transmitted, to, con to convert it into data. So I want to concentrate the transmission energy and convert it into data. This is why I'll use toroids. Countermeasures against spike ripples. Because we have a concentrated and high saturation electromagnetic field, it protects against external spikes and ripples that are coming on the run. EMI RFI filters, electromagnetic interference and radio, radio frequency interference filters, DC to DC converters. Because there is a concentrated magnetic flux in between the ring, we can apply DC, DC into a DC to DC converter and convert it into AC, have a concentrated flux, convert the AC back to DC and get DC outside. We don't lose any energy from the conversion of DC to AC and AC to DC. Input and output devices, again, to minimize the losses between the input and the output. And let's talk about the ferret, the ferret core. And here we see some examples of in the pictures. And the ferret is the material on which the coils sit, or the coils getting wounded. The definition of it, a ferret core is a type of magnetic core made of the material ferret, on which the winding of electric transformer and other wounded components such as inductors are formed. It is used for its pro properties of high magnetic permeability coupled with low electrical conductivity, which helps prevest, prevent eddy current. We'll talk about eddy current in a minute. But we have, when we have low electrical conductivity, it means it, pro, it prevents parasitic currents to be developed in within the material. That's low electrical conductivity. It's the opposite as short. 
A short will allow current to flow as much as, as, much as it can. Low electric relativity means it's kind of an insulation, insulator, avoiding development of parasitic current within the material. Because of their compa comparability, low losses at high frequencies, they are extensively used in the course of RF transformers and inductors. Because no parasitic currents, because no losses or at high frequencies, we use them for the RF application, radio frequency application. The shape can be toroidal, shell, or a C or E shape, as we see in the picture, and are useful in all kinds of electronic switching device. Why switching? Because there's a transient between state number one and state number two. Very quick transient in switch. Ferret will disable the development of parasitic currents within the material in this high transient time. We mentioned eddy currents. Let's talk about eddy currents and let's look at the picture on the right hand side and we'll see what it is. We see a magnet and this magnet creates electromagnetic field Underneath, there is a conductor. Because of the uh, conductance of the conductor itself, the conductivity, and the flux of the magnet, these red circle, red parasitic circles are generated, which are basically eddy currents. Eddy currents, they are the red uh, circles, induced in the conductive metal plate as it moves to right under the magnet. It only happens, uh, open, happens when, the, when the conductor moves. The magnetic field is directed down through the plate. Now from a length low, look at the forces. The increasing field at the leading edge of the magnet, it's on the left hand side as you can see, induces a counterclockwise current. Look at the direction on the a left set of round, red round circles of the eddy current. It's a counter-close current, which creates its own magnetic field. This eddy current, which is a parasitic current, we don't want it. It's basically a leak and it's a loss, create its own magnetic field. Because it has a conductor and there's an electromagnetic field, so current is being created. When current is being created, heat is being generated. So that's a loss of energy. Uh, which oppose the magnet's field producing a retarding force. This, based on length, low, if we follow the, the direction of the hand and the thumb, we will see that the force is being generated. And the other way around, similarly, is with the trailing edge of the magnet. So a force will be actually uh, generated in the other direction. So not only that we have a parasitic current called eddy currents, we do get two uh, reverse direction forces on the magnets, between the magnets and the, and the, and the conductor itself. So the conductor actually changed the position, physically changed the position under the magnet. And with actually changed the position, it becomes somewhat under the magnet, somewhat outside the magnet. That's releasing the, the, um, the, 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 the destroying the symmetry of the electromagnetic field. So we lose energy because of that. No more 100% of the power in goes out to the load. There are losses in terms of heat, and here, like we just learned, there are losses in terms of eddy current.